Baseball Playoff Semifinal at the 86 Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, a rival news conference featuring Cincinnati head coach Lou Fickle of the number four Bearcats. For the media attending, please use the raise your hand function to indicate you want to ask a question. When you're called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. Coach Fickle, while we get your questions ready, can you talk about the excitement around your program leading up to your arrival here in North Texas? Well, yeah, it's it's been an incredibly exciting ride, uh, I think, this whole season. You know, I'm coming into it with really high expectations, uh, a little bit different than a, than kind of the platform that we've been in before. Obviously, our, our uh, opponents are, are used to it, quite used to it, obviously. Uh, it was a little bit different for us, just kind of with some of that talk going into the, going into the year based on what happened last year. Um, and our guys did a phenomenal job. They, they kind of rode a roller coaster of a little bit of ups and downs, not, not as much of the downs because obviously we found a way to win every football game. But, you know, we had to go through a period of time there where, you know, we had to figure out who we were and what we really wanted to be and quit trying to be something that somebody else wanted us to be. And uh, I think we kind of got into that groove and really had a chance to kind of enjoy the last few weeks of the season playing better, better football and winning a championship. And now we're trying to find that balance, that balance between uh, you know, really enjoying what these guys have created. I say these guys, these 30-some seniors and, and a lot of other guys and staff members, what they've created, um, it's really tough, you know, trying to figure out where that balance is. I want them all to enjoy it. I want to enjoy it. Uh, but we also know this is an opportunity that doesn't come around every year. And uh, we want to take advantage of that opportunity uh, by doing everything we can and making sure this is about a business, this is about a football game, um, first and foremost. Hey, Coach, your first question is going to come from Gary Miller from WKRC-TV. Gary, go ahead with your question. Hi, Coach. Uh, just could describe how big a weapon Alec Pierce is and how you've shown, how you've seen the development, the rapport, the chemistry between he and Desmond as the year has gone on. Well, Gary, uh, you say about his development. I think uh, four years ago, three years ago, going into our bowl game, we moved him over to defense. And... Um, try to make him a linebacker and so he uh, he obviously has gone way beyond what we ever thought probably and, and has developed uh, into an incredible wide receiver I think uh, you know his connection with Des uh, I think really has grown throughout the year I think early in the year last year you know the absence of a little bit of Alec Pierce he had a knee injury right before the season started I think really kind of hurt Desmond Ritter in a lot of ways because they were just starting to build that chemistry and uh, really what those guys have done throughout this entire year uh, I think really has been something that's given us a little bit of a different punch than we've had any of our time um, in the last five years uh, and I think it's been a different punch for Des I mean just a guy that you know he knows he's got an opportunity to those 50-50 balls become a little bit more 60-40 even 70-30 uh, and has done an unbelievable job of creating some true energy for us and, and giving us a big uh, a big play weapon on the outside. Coach, your next question is going to come from Chad Brendel. Chad, go ahead with your question. Hi, Coach. <laughs> you couldn't ask these things back and since. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Chad. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, just wondering, what has it been like as a, a guy that's coached a lot of defense for a long time, having a guy like Ahmad that where you know one side of the field is pretty much shut down. And then knowing coming into this game, he's absolutely going to get, get challenged by James Williams as well. Well, I think, you know, just kind of going back to just a mod in general throughout the entire season, he's done a phenomenal job. And, you know, it's tough sometimes at those positions that, you know, people can, you know, in some ways, you know, go away from you and, and kind of, I'm not going to say, you know, not take their shots, but, you know, even even take their offense in a different direction. I think we saw that a bunch, a bit this year, and, and it was frustrating for Ahmad. And uh, I give him a lot of credit that, you know, he didn't, you know, get out of characteristics, start doing things outside of uh, what we expect him to do in order to try to make plays and try to create things because at times he was left alone. Um, but I, I would say the maturity of – where he's come uh, in the last couple of years has really shown, I think, this year in particular because of that. And then when they do come back at him, it's, it's usually only really big situations and a lot of times in the red zone. And so he's grown up a lot, um, not just as a football player, but in his whole mindset of how he has to go about the game. Uh, but I think the challenge here this week is going to be incredible for him because 
they're not going to go away from. There's going to be opportunities that, um, you know, he's going to have one of the best receivers in college football uh, matched up one on one, and uh, you know, he's going to be challenged. And you know, for us as a as a defense as well, we got to be smart too. That, you know, we've maybe gotten away with some things all year to be able to, you know, leave him alone off the backside. That you know, we also got to be aware that that's uh, that's not always a win win uh, in every situation now. So. Even though he wants and loves the challenge, you know we've also got to be smart as a whole um, to make sure we've got some ways to change some things up and not just always stick him on an island, even though we believe he's as good as he really is. Coach, your next question is going to come from Chris Vanini with The Athletic. Chris, go ahead with your question. Hey, Luke. Uh, yeah, you guys are about two touchdown underdogs. I'm sure you don't actually care about that, but I'm just curious if you feel like uh, you guys need to uh, prove yourselves a little bit at all to maybe part of the country who hasn't watched you as much. Thanks, Chris. Uh, no, I wasn't quite aware exactly where those things are. Usually when you start to see them pop up at the bottom of the ticker, I turn the channel. So uh, uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, we know, you know, we, we have a good idea. I mean, if you're going to, you know, if you want to have a shot at the title, you got to beat the champs. And, you know, this is what we have. We have a shot to, to beat the champs. And regardless of, you know, what the line is of any sorts, um, you know, we've said it all year long that, you know, the best team doesn't always win the game. You know, it's just a reality that the, the teams that play the best win the football game. And, you know, for us to worry about, um, you know, what the line is and, you know, us proving ourselves to anybody else, I think the, the greatest lesson that we learned throughout the stretch of our probably the – Two th second two thirds of our season um, is that we we had to stop trying to prove people uh, or live up to it what an expectation that they wanted us to be. You know they wanted us to win this way and you're favored by this so you got to do this and you know I, I think it took a toll on us and you know I think the the us getting kind of in our groove down the last four games of the season we kind of put that behind us and said we just got to be us regardless of if we're favored or if we're underdogs and you know, do what it is that we do, be us, and, and let's enjoy what it is that we're doing. So um, I don't know all that. I know that our guys don't feel like they need to prove anything. Uh, they just want to compete. And, you know, I think that that was the greatest thing I learned about those guys even last year throughout the midst of all the stuff that we had to go through is they were, they're competitors. And when the ball goes down, it's all they care about is competing. And uh, if that means they're going to try to prove somebody wrong, they're going to try to prove somebody wrong. But reality is we just want to prove ourselves right. Next question is going to come from Stephen Hawkins from the Associated Press. Go ahead, Stephen. Luke, you mentioned in your opening thing about the fact that this is a new experience for your guys. Alabama's obviously experienced at that. It's been three weeks since it all came out. What have you seen the mentality of your team since that, getting that big moment of, hey, we're there, but how's it changed leading in a game week? And how do you feel that prepared now that we're here game week? Well, this is a big week, you know. I mean, I think that, you know, back home we tried not to, you know, get too, you know, what I'd say peak too soon and get, you know, too much into Alabama, you know, three weeks out uh, just because I know how our guys are. And, you know, that's what they would rather do and that's what they would want to do. But then, you know, that week of sometimes it gets a, – there's a law in there. So, um I really sensed the maturity. I did. I, I mean, I know we, we've got a lot of older guys and guys have been through a lot, and I keep hammering away at that. But I did sense the maturity that, uh, you know, we put the ball down and competed against each other and actually had to kind of shut them down from doing it because in some ways I'm not saying it got too competitive, but I didn't want it to get to a point where we're getting guys hurt and things like that. So uh, their attitudes have been great. I think they really understand the opportunity they have in front of them. Um, and the, the, these situations and these things don't come around every year. And, you know, for me, I want them to enjoy the moment. I want them to enjoy what it is that they've created. Uh, but I also, you know, don't need to worry about them, you know, losing focus because that's who they are. And uh, they're excited about the opportunity. They're excited about the challenge. Um, but I also want them, I'm a little bit the other way, I want them to be able to enjoy a little bit of the, the surroundings and the things that they've created all in the midst of making sure that they'll be ready for the 31st. Coach, your next question is going to come from Zane Phillips. Zane, go ahead with your question. Uh, happy holidays, Coach Fickle. Well, thanks, Zane. Appreciate you, too. So there are no secrets at this point in the process, but there's still insights to be gained. Because football is an extremely finite universe, you've played with and coached with and 
with people who have found their way into the orbit of Coach Saban. Uh, one, have you reached out to some of the people that you've either played with or coached with in the past who have also played for and or coached for uh, Coach Saban? And if so, what insights have they given you? No, you know, not, not a whole lot, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I mean, I, I've studied Coach from a, for a long time and not, not playing against him, just in general of all the things that they've done and what he's done, whether it was at Michigan State or even um, obviously at Alabama. So uh, I don't know that there was any other insights. I don't get it. Obviously, Coach Mark D'Antonio is a really close friend of mine, and he coached for uh, Coach Saban for you know a few years at, at Michigan State. Um, but it's not like I sat down to try to pick his brain to say, hey, how does he go about a bowl game and this, that, and the other thing. I think, uh, like you said, you, you, we've seen a lot of football. Um, you know, you can study every game they've got the whole season. I, I've watched them play for, for years and years and years, and you know you're going to get some things that are a little bit different. But um, I think sometimes we can do a little bit too much, and then you start to get yourself into that frenzy where you, you can't really be yourself. You can't focus upon yourself and the things that you got to do because maybe you're ultimately overly worried about all the different things that you have no idea exactly what it is that they could do, but you're trying to speculate. So, you know, you, 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 you kind of close the down a little bit more and try to assume the things that you would assume and, and just know that uh, there are going to be adjustments to be made. Obviously, great coaches are going to do some different things, especially with a three-week break. And I think one of the big things about this game in general, bowl games in particular, playoffs, um, more than anyone, uh, I think that the, the ability to make those adjustments from the first quarter, the first drive or so into that second half is where, to me, uh, the real part of the game and the, the kind of the game within the game, uh, I think, will be. Coach, your next question is going to come from Mike Rodak from AL.com. Mike, go ahead with your question. With COVID having impacted sports as much as it has the last couple of weeks, just where does your team stand as far as any players or, or coaches that might have been impacted and just what extra steps are you taking this week in Dallas? We've all been impacted. We we, we know that it's out there. So uh, that's about all I you know worry about. We, we all have our things that we've got to overcome. We've got a lot of other colds. We've got a lot of other flus and things we've missed throughout the season. And, um, you know, so we know we got to be smart about what it is that we're doing. And, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to dwell upon those things because sometimes I think those are the things hold us up more than anything. They take our energy. They, they get us into a different frame of mind. Um, we've got a very mature group that uh, understands what they're here to do and understands that means they're going to have to, you know, have some sacrifices that, you know, maybe they wouldn't do on a normal, so to speak, um, six-day bowl trip or five-day bowl trip where they could go out and do some things. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll be smart about who we're around. We'll be smart about where we're going. Um, but we're going to be us, and we're going to continue to do what it is that we've done all year. And, you know, we found a way to, to, for it to work for us. Coach, your next question is going to come from Brandon Seho from WLWT-TV. Brandon, go ahead. Hey, Luke, I was just curious. Uh, what is your message to your team this week when you guys get there and you start to go to work? I know you're very routine-driven, want to treat every game the same, but do you want them to embrace that this is, you know, the biggest moment in program history or you not want them to think about it like that? No, I, I think those are some of those things that you understand. And, uh you know, not that we you know got to get rid of the elephant that's in the room. We all understand the, the opportunities we have in front of us. That's what I keep harping upon, the mature group that we've got. And uh, I think that group really takes a lot of that off of the coaching staff and me in particular because the ones you worry about are the younger guys. And that locker room is so well um, handled with leadership that those guys do a phenomenal job. You know, we, we've, we've got our messages and the things that we've got to do. Um, in some ways, I, I've got to make sure – they, as well as myself, enjoy this opportunity in this moment. And if you're a competitor and you love the challenges, then, then you do. You know, not just because it's the playoffs, but also because you're playing the champs. And um, so I think there is a balance there. I know for the most part in our group, I think I'll continue to remind them to enjoy the process, to enjoy what it is that they've created. They know what we're here for. They're a very business-like group of guys. Uh, I say that more often about the enjoyment of it and, and recognizing your surroundings because of what they've created because I need to remind myself as much as anybody. And uh, so I think that uh, they found a way to have a good balance. We just got to continue it throughout this entire week. Coach, you got three questions to close you out. Your next one is going to come from James Hill. James, go ahead with your question. 
Coach Fickle, I hope you and the guys and the Bearcats uh, nation are well. Uh, it's James Hill with BNC Sports. You've been a part of two national championships before, and now you're back with a uh, quality Bearcats football team. Talk about this Cotton Bowl and how special it can be, and again, going in and getting the job done. Well, thanks, James. I appreciate it. And this is my actual first Cotton Bowl. I played here, obviously, in the national championship in 2014, but I don't know that it was legitimately the Cotton Bowl. And obviously, you know, it was a little bit different. I think you come in for two two days or whatever it is. So, you know, I, I want these guys to to experience all. I know that it's going to be a little bit different with some of the things that we are not able to do maybe um, because of, you know, the situation. But the reality is that, you know, that they've, they've worked their tails off for this. They've put themselves in a position. They've been challenged all year. Um, they stepped up to the challenge all year in everything that we've been asked to do. Um, like all teams, it's not always the prettiest, um, but I think the the key in all the things that we're doing is we got to not forget who we are, you know. We got to continue to be us, and uh, you know that's where we can't allow some of the other stuff to overwhelm us with, you know, all the different things that might be going on. So in some ways, you know, the ability to you know it, to be not say a little smaller, but a little bit more business-like just because of the surroundings and the situation, I think can also be a, a good thing for us to allow our guys to, you know, to enjoy each other uh, for the last, what I would say, guaranteed opportunity um, to do what it is that they love to do together. And, uh, you know, we always say it's the last guaranteed one. Uh, you take care of your business and, and there can be more. Um, but I think for, for the most part, our guys understand that. Um, I think last year's bowl game gives us an opportunity to understand the magnitude of, of you know the, the teams that you're playing, the team that we're playing. So I think all those things added together, I think our guys are you know really excited and embracing the opportunity and uh, and the the challenge uh, that's ahead of us. Coach, your next question is going to be a follow up from Chris Benini. Chris, go ahead with your question. Yeah, you kind of touched on it earlier, but the idea that if a team has to can't play due to COVID, uh, they have to forfeit, and it's essentially the, the same for the championship game. Um, does does that uh, just kind of kind of ramp up how important it is that everybody is careful with what they do? Everything's important, Chris. I mean, everything that we do is important. You know, guys get hurt. Guys, you know, we're going to go out there and practice tomorrow, and you know, we're not going to not hit each other and not touch each other be because we don't want a guy to hurt his ankle or knee. So I think we all understand um, the issues that surround us, uh, the magnitude of what is the opportunities that we have. And uh, I can promise that we're going to not let anything stand in our way. Coach, your final question is going to come from Ken Caps from the Football Writers Association of America. Ken, go ahead with your question. Coach, welcome to North Texas. And... Uh, you do have this great mature group. What do you think they should be telling the, uh, the younger guys that may get a little wide-eyed and just be happy to be here? What do we say at times? Uh, you know, close your mouth, open your ears, and follow. I think uh, I think we might say it in a little different way sometimes, but um, I think that's what they really have told them. And uh, you know, that that's kind of been the message throughout the entire season. It's gotten to be even a bigger message. Uh, as we've had, you know, this opportunity uh, thrown in front of us, and uh, you know, the, the good fortunes of not having a ton of young guys that that might be starting on offense and defense, but are key members of our of our of our team, um, those guys have done a phenomenal job at, at being an example too. And I think that's more than than anything is is you know, I know I always say Desmond Ritter and Joel DeBlanco and Maje Sanders and Darian Beavers and Alec. I mean, all those guys. They do a great job of making sure that, uh, you know, they don't just, even though they're gone and out of here, they don't just let those young guys kind of coast off on their own. They know that since the time they've walked in, we've always said that your leadership is measured on how you leave the place. And if you leave it in a better place and the leaders behind you are better than you were, then that means you did a phenomenal job. So they take pride in not just leading themselves and just the guys that, uh, you know, might be the starters around them, but in leading that whole entire locker room. And, you know, I think our younger guys that, I'm not saying they always understand to shut their mouth and open their ears and, and follow, but uh, I think what we've been through this entire season, they've, uh, they've learned in a good way. Coach, we're actually going to close with a follow-up from Gary Miller. Gary, go ahead. Yes. 
Hey, Coach. Welcome to North Texas. Thanks, Gary. Uh, what was it like, you know, when you were, everybody got back, and you saw what happened to the basketball team, you saw what's going on with the NFL, and how relieved were you, or are you, that, you know, you don't have to deal with that today, but you will this week. And, you know, that moment when everybody got back together and you weren't sure if everyone was going to be cleared or not. I'm not exactly sure what uh, what you mean. I'm not sure exactly what happened with the basketball team. Um, but I know this, that uh, our guys know what's at stake. And we all know that we have to make sacrifices when things are really important to you. And uh, there's a lot of sacrifices that have been made throughout this entire season. There'll be a lot more sacrifices that had to be made in the last couple weeks, uh, and, and, and even this week. And if, you know, God forsake to go, to go forward, there'll be more sacrifices to be made. Um, but we understand that. We don't live our lives in fear, but we also aren't ignorant. So we're smart about what we're doing. Uh, we know we've got a task in front of us, uh, and we're not going to allow anything to stand in our way. Well, Coach, that's going to do it for you today. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. That's it for Coach Fickle today. A full transcript along with video will be distributed via email and posted in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic section of the College Football Playoff Media Portal. To gain access to the portal, send an email to licensing at catapultsports. Thank you for joining us today.